Welcome back. This is part two of, is it possible to beat LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga without touching a single stud? Definitely go watch part one first if you haven't yet, because I go over all the rules and stuff like that. You may be wondering why I titled this video the way I did instead of changing it to, what is the minimum number of studs you have to touch to beat LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga instead, since in part one we already found out you can't beat the game without touching any studs. Well, I wanted to maintain consistency, and this title is shorter and a lot catchier. Okay, in this video I will cover the original trilogy levels, but before we jump into A New Hope, I have a few corrections for part one. First off, I forgot to mention for the rules that no extras or drop-in drop-out co-op are allowed. Also, any studs that explode out of you when you die do not count. That just makes things simpler. But there were also some studs I said were unavoidable, which actually are avoidable. You probably didn't notice, but I even put a hidden message at the end of part one about this. But even that message was incorrect. There are three levels that need correcting. The first is Discovery on Camino. In part one, I said all 12 of these studs had to be collected, but actually only nine do. If you start off with R4 on top of a button and then move around, R4 will then press one more button for you. This means not all 12 buttons have to be pressed, only nine. The next level, Droid Factory, has three studs I incorrectly said were unavoidable. Going past this press thing, you only have to touch one stud, not two. Going onto this ledge, you again only have to touch one stud, not two. And in this room, you can force this Turner thing from over here as long as you move the camera over so it is in view. You don't have to get closer like I previously thought. And the final correction is on Defense of Kashyyyk, where it turns out you only have to touch three studs here, not all four. And you can shoot the clone troopers from here without having to grapple over. This saves you from touching four studs. Overall, this brings down the total studs touched for the prequel levels from 109 to 98 studs. Okay, on to the original trilogy levels. Will we be able to get below 100 studs touched? Maybe. Let's find out. Episode 4, Chapter 1. This level does not start off promisingly. Right off the bat, there is a stud in this doorway, which cannot be avoided. And then another one in the next doorway. Avoid all the studs that fly out of these things when you build them. Also, single jump characters from the original trilogy can jump over single studs, unlike in the prequels, which is nice. With these levers, it doesn't matter which one you choose, you'll have to touch a stud. And at the end of the level, there is an unavoidable stud in front of this R2 panel, and another at this C-3PO panel. That's a total of five studs for the level. Chapter 2 this bridge near the start is tough to get past without touching a stud, but if you jump to the back corner and then across, you can avoid the studs. Getting over this hill is tricky, so get as far as possible on the side and then jump up like this. When going up into the Jawa Sandcrawler, just jump into it to avoid the stud on the ground. The only unavoidable studs for the rest of the level are the two at this R2-D2 panel. There are a couple more tricky parts later though. Here, instead of jumping on the rock platforms, jump onto the ridge on the left. It can be tough to get it just right, and here you can use the force on the bridge. This part is a little easier. Just jump like this to avoid the studs. On to chapter 3, my personal favorite level of the game. In the beginning area, be careful with C-3PO to avoid the studs on this walkway. In the ATST section, normally you would have to build this ramp to get C-3PO to the panel, which would mean you would have to touch this blue stud that stays here permanently. But there is another way to get C-3PO up there. It's a bit finicky, but get him as close to the step as possible, and then do a jump slash attack on him. The next tricky part is once you get Han. If you grapple up here, you'll have to touch this stud. Going the other way seems even worse, as there doesn't seem to be any way to get to the lever without touching studs. However, you can jump up here and then swing across. Once you push the block down, be careful to line it up in the middle just right to get it through without touching either of these studs. After that, the level is easy. Chapter 4, possibly the most complicated level of the game. Use R2 to fly over these studs since jumping won't work. Going through this hallway, you'll have to touch the stud right at the entrance, but the next two can be avoided by jumping carefully to the side. 
Once you enter the next area, you will automatically collect a stud. This part after the bridge is very tough. You have to touch two studs, jump over as far as you can towards your character's right, and then do a double jump forward like this, but don't fall off. Luke can jump higher than Han, so he is a little easier to use, but both work. If you lose your helmet, don't use this helmet dispenser because you will touch a stud. At the Stormtrooper panel is an unavoidable stud. And then there's another one here. To get out of this area, jump onto the turner and then onto the walkway. Double check that you have a helmet on both characters because you can't use this dispenser either. Going up this grapple will cause you to collect four studs, and then you'll have to touch one here and two here. Then down here, I always ended up touching a stud, but I believe it is possible to get through without touching one. What you'd have to do is have your double jump from up top land just perfectly in this corner, and then roll off the edge. You'll spawn back on the lower level and can jump over the stud. This is the first and only time I was unable to avoid a stud that is avoidable. In this room, don't shoot anyone. When you build the Stormtrooper panel, they'll all turn hostile, but you can activate it faster than they can shoot your helmet off. And finally, with these two levers, it doesn't matter which one you pick, you'll have to touch two studs for either one. So for the entire level, there are 15 unavoidable studs. Glad that one's over. But chapter 5 isn't much better. You spawn on a stud right away, and make sure not to touch all the other studs around you. To get past this door, double jump on the right side. Since you have to have a helmet for the next area, you must touch a stud pulling this lever. In the next area, when you grapple over here, make sure to move back to avoid touching a stud as you fall. Getting past all these studs is tricky, and you have to touch at least one. It's easiest if you touch the closest one on the right, then jump around the rest. And you'll have to make this jump at least twice. When you press all the buttons with the buggy, it's best to jump out right as you hit the last one, so that you don't ride into the studs when the little cutscene plays. Make sure not to lose your helmet for a while, since you'll have to go all the way back, because the dispenser up ahead has a stud in front of it. In this hallway, you have to touch at least one stud. Jump just like this. This part has some precise jumping. Pull the center lever to avoid the studs, and then jump perfectly to get past these. Once you start building, everyone will turn hostile, and as I said, you don't want to lose your helmet. Coming into this area, you'll automatically touch two studs. On the next platform, you only have to touch one. Jump here and then be careful when building the grapple. Grappling over, move towards the left corner while you fall, so you only touch two studs. In this room, you can't pull down either lever on the left side due to the studs, so it can be annoying to build the door while constantly being shot at. And then in the final area, there are eight unavoidable studs. Three at this R2 panel, one grappling up here, two at this R2 panel, and two pulling this lever. That makes 18 total studs for the level. And chapter six. Like a lot of vehicle levels, most studs will automatically collect themselves, and these don't count. Just keep your distance while torpedoing stuff, and the level is pretty easy. The total number of unavoidable studs for episode four is 40. Moving on to episode five, chapter one. Similar to the previous level, keep your distance whenever destroying something, and you should have an easy time not touching any studs. Chapter 2 At the start, you have to touch this stud to go through the door, and then to push this heater, you have to touch at least one stud. Just be careful because there is another hidden stud back there. In this room, if you play through it like you're supposed to, when you launch C-3PO onto the upper level, he'll automatically wait for you by this panel, but when you swap to him there, you'll automatically collect the stud he is standing on. So you can either swap to him before he gets there, or you can push him onto the upper level yourself. No launcher buggy thing required. In the last area of the level, typically you would use a Tauntaun to jump onto the Millennium Falcon, but if you do that, you'll have to touch a stud. However, you can jump onto the Falcon as Han from here. It might take a few tries, or 20, but it is possible. That means the level has two unavoidable studs. Now chapter three, another vehicle level. And just like the other two, keep your distance when destroying stuff and you'll be fine. Though I will say the part inside the Exogorth can be tricky because at least one stud will always spawn with a torpedo. Just wait for the torpedo to be a safe distance away from the stud before getting it. 
Besides that, the level is pretty easy to get through without touching a stud. Chapter 4 Right off the bat, there is a tricky section. There is no way to build these ramps without touching a stud, so we have to think a little outside the box. The easiest way to get by is to fly on top of this block as R2, then fly onto these plants, and then onto the upper level. Here, normally you would have to touch the stud at the R2 panel, but you can actually fly over these plants like this. Just make sure to avoid the stud on the other side too. In the next section, again, normally you would have to destroy all these plants in order to build a bridge across the water, which would mean touching a bunch of studs that explode out. But you can actually use R2 to swim across. Here, fly to this spot to miss the stud, and then fly here to get onto the platform. No Jedi required. You can do the same thing with the next one, but it is a bit trickier. When you enter the next area, a short cutscene thing will play, and it is completely random whether your character will collect a stud or not. Then, use R2 to swim across here, land right here to avoid the stud, and then you'll have to touch one stud when you use this panel. Most of the level after that is pretty easy, but there are three more studs you have to touch. One here, one here, and one here. That's a total of four unavoidable studs for the level. Moving on to Chapter 5. You'll have to touch two studs in front of this R2 panel. Then there is an unmissable stud at this panel, and two more when building this turret. To make sure you only touch two though, reset your character because he'll move around a bit when building. You have to touch three at this helmet dispenser. Here, wait for the platform to come back, and then jump around the studs. Fly over these studs as R2, and then you'll have to touch two when going up this fan. For some reason, most of the time if you enter the next area as R2, Luke will push you into a stud immediately, so it's best to enter the area as Luke instead. You have to collect all four studs in front of this R2 panel. In the next room, typically you would fly over as R2 and use the two panels, causing you to touch both studs, but you can actually just jump across as Luke, causing Vader to break the window. Then there are three more studs you have to touch at this R2 panel. That's 17 unavoidable studs in total. Chapter 6 It's a bit tough to get past here without touching a stud, but jump just like this with Lando and you'll get by. The next tough stud is this one. It took me a ton of tries, but I finally was able to get past it. In the next area, you have to touch this stud when grappling. When you grapple up here, you have to touch three more studs. And then when pulling the lever, you have to touch one more. Get R2 over this thing, and then fly over the gap, avoiding all the studs except this one which is unavoidable. You don't actually have to use this R2 panel, since everyone spawns into whatever room you're entering. That means only the stud at this R2 panel is unmissable. That's a total of 7 for the level. So for episode 5, there are 30 studs you have to touch. Now the final one, episode 6, and it's a bit of a doozy. Chapter 1 you might think you have to touch these three studs to make the turrets come out, but if you are very careful, you can jump just right to make the turrets come out without collecting the stud. Next, you have to touch one stud in this hallway, even though it looks like you should be able to get by without touching one. After opening the door, wait for Luke to come over and use him to jump over the line of studs. When building this platform, you'll end up having to touch two studs, but be careful not to touch any more while building. Then use Luke to lift up the CPU instead of you being lifted up. Pull down the left lever to avoid the studs. The next tough spot is here. Use R2 and get right here, then fly over all the studs. You'll then have to touch three studs here in front of this R2 panel. The last unavoidable stud is this one in front of this lever. That's a total of seven for the level. Chapter 2 Interestingly, and depressingly, this level is tied for the most unavoidable studs for any level in the game. Pull the lever on the right side to only touch two studs, and not the left one which makes you touch three. Be careful when jumping onto the next skiff, because it takes away control for a moment, which can cause you to land on a stud. Also, make sure you are in control of Luke, because he'll automatically go here, where if you swap to him, you'll pick up a few studs. This time, pull the left lever to only touch one stud, rather than the other one which makes you touch two. Next, to get across this gap, you only have to have the middle section pulled out, which is the lever at the top. Up here, you can jump over one stud in the left section, and another towards the right. 
but if you use Luke, you can jump over one more stud than with just using Han. To get Luke up here, push this box right here and jump up. This whole section has 12 unavoidable studs. Up here, you have to touch three studs to build this, and three more to push this down. Then to build this speaker, you have to touch one stud. If you build it one piece at a time and continually run into this corner, you'll be able to avoid the second stud. You'll then have to touch two studs at this R2 panel. That puts the total unavoidable studs for the level at 24. Chapter 3 The entire speeder section can easily be done without touching a stud. Just don't shoot anything and then fly into the studs. At the end of the level, there are two studs you can't miss when jumping onto the ATAT. On to Chapter 4 this is another complicated one. At the start, there is about a 75% chance that you'll spawn in on two studs. But I did spawn in on only one once, which means one is possible. Once at the second gap, rather than grappling up to this lever, you can fly across the gap using R2. In the next part, you have to touch two studs by this lever. Once on the ground level, instead of using the Ewok passage to press this button, which would mean touching three studs, Use Han to jump up to the lever. This results in only touching two studs. When you use this Ewok passage, you have to touch four studs. After building the grapple in the ramp, use the Ewok passage again to press the button. The next tough part is here with the ATST. You only have to touch one stud, but you have to jump perfectly. You then have to touch two studs when grappling up here. In the left room of the bunker, you have to touch this stud to press the button, but for this one you can avoid the stud by jumping towards the back left. You can avoid the left stud on the top by walking with C-3PO as close to the edge as possible, but it is quite difficult. The right stud you have to touch to activate the panel. In the right room, you can jump over these two studs to build this bridge. Then use R2 to fly over to the far right side. If you get lucky, C-3PO will come close enough for you to swap over to him. Then use the panel, touching the two studs if you haven't already. For the final lever, typically you would have to fly over as R2 to use the panel on this platform, and it becomes a big mess with all the studs in the way. But thankfully, there is a glitch where if you stand right here, and then move the camera towards the right, Wicket will somehow get inside the lever area. That means you don't have to touch any studs to pull the lever. In total for the level, there are 16 unavoidable studs. Chapter 5 this boss level has zero unavoidable studs. The only tricky part is getting across this railing. Just take your time jumping between the studs and you should be fine. Chapter 6 This is one of the trickier vehicle levels. Like always, whenever torpedoing something, keep your distance. But once you destroy the reactor and are flying away, try to dodge all the pillars as best you can. But for some of them, you have to shoot them to get past. For these, you have a couple options. Shoot just as you were about to crash into them, which makes it so the studs that come out won't have time to be collected. Or shoot them far ahead of you, and then wait for the studs to disappear. You actually have unlimited time in this section, and can go as slow as you want, since the fireball recedes a bit whenever you die. Either way, you'll probably die quite a lot. That means episode 6 has a total of 49 studs you must touch. That puts the total for the 18 original trilogy levels at 119 studs. Which is a little bit high, but not too bad. Especially considering how on average the original trilogy levels are longer and more complex. Adding that to the 98 from the prequels, and we now have the answer for what is the minimum number of studs you must touch to beat LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, 217. It's likely the real number is a little less than 217, because the chances I messed up somewhere are pretty decent. I already had to correct part 1, where I was off by 10 studs, so I feel less confident about this number now. And if it turns out to be wrong, I'll just update the description. I'm not gonna make a follow-up video or anything like that. So thanks for going on this journey with me. I'm not really sure if it was worth it, but it's always fun to revisit the older LEGO games. I probably won't make any videos on them for a while, though. Anyways, thanks for watching.